Hello everybody. This is a supplemental tutorial to accompany our previous tutorial where we used velocity vectors generated in Nuke to drive a fluid simulation. Uh, we got a question on the internet about how we could do this without writing so much code. And today my goal is to tackle that. This may seem a little bit pointless to some of you, but I think that there is a validity in learning that there are many ways to skin the same cat in Houdini and it's it's designed to work with whatever your brain type is. So inside of our emitter, down here where our attribute wrangle was created, we did all this, this code right here. And um, what I'm going to try to tackle right now is to do this without using any code. And in order to do that, we're going to do it in bops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my desktop in such a way that I can refer to this code at the same time as working in BOPS. So I'm going to go up into this right hand corner over here and I'm going to say split left right and I'm going to go on this bottom section as well and I'm going to say split left right. Now I'm going to take these I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose number two. So this whole, this half of the screen is going to be tied together um, to one another. So when I select a node here, oh, see it's changing this one over here, this side as well. So what I'm going to do is immediately lock down this one to number one and then this one to number one. And up here, I'm going to choose last selected node. Great. Now, when I select a node over here, it changes this parameter view. And when I select a node over here, it changes this parameter view. And I'm just going to leave on this side the um, the uh, velocity controls attribute wrangle up. Okay. And then over here, what we're going to do is we're going to do our work. So I'm going to drop down an attribute VOP. And then we're going to wire in our input, hit the display flag, and dive inside. So now here we have our inputs and our outputs. And as you can see here, we've got V, which is what we brought in on the code side over here. So what we're, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get our velocity broken out into floats so that we can plug it back into itself over here. So let's do some work on this. The first thing I'm going to need to do is break the vector V out into its X, Y, and Z components. So to do that, we're going to do a vector to float. And I'm going to wire in the V. All right. Now, in order to shuffle our vector data around like this, we're going to actually need to convert from a, a vector in to a float and then from a float back to a vector. So let's drop that in. And so what did we say over here? We're taking the X velocity and mapping it to the X velocity. So that's simply the first parameter to the first parameter. Then we're doing the Y velocity to the Z parameter. So we just go like that. Now what we need to do is we need to create the um, section of this that is going to uh, account for this Y component up here. Well, first off, we're going to wire this up to V so we know that that's what's going on. What we need to do is we need to work on this value right here. So in order to do that, I'm going to give us some space here. We're going to need to do some work on the X and Y velocities. We're doing vel X plus vel Y. Well, that's, that's simple. We'll just drop down an add node and we're going to take in vel X and vel y. So there we go. We're just simply adding those two together to get this section. Then what we want to do is we want to divide that by four. So we'll add a divide node. First input goes in there. And here we can, 
we can either promote this parameter and manipulate it one level up out of our interface, or we can just wire in a constant, which I'll do here. And we'll set it to four. And then what does it look like we're going to do here? It looks like we actually take the absolute value of all of this. So let's wire this into an absolute value node. And then finally, we want to negate it. So we'll add it into a negate node. And finally, we now can wire this back into our y velocity. And that's essentially what we've done is we've taken all of this, and we're putting it into here. Now it looks like another thing that we did was we added a global multiplier to the velocity to determine, you know, how much um, how much of an impact we want it to have. So if we go on here, it looks like we have this multiplier parameter that we set here. We set it to the 0.439. So we'll create a parameter for that in our interface that we can um, use to uh, use to drive this similarly with a slider. So let's go over here. Let's add a little bit more space, and then we're going to add down a multiply. Pop that right there, and then our multiplier is going to go in right here. I'm going to middle mouse button this and click Promote Parameter. So now if we go up to our attribute VOP, we scroll down on this screen, we should see our input number 2. Um, we don't really want it to be named that, so but what it is going to do is it's going to be, it, this is going to be our multiplier. To clean this up a little bit, let's just hop up here and hit this gear, and then we're going to say edit parameter interface. What, what The one I'm looking for here is input num number two. Um, this is called input two. I'm just going to rename it mult, and then label it as multiplier. And the range from 0 to 1 is good. It's a float. Excellent. Apply and accept. So now we've got our multiplier like we did over here on our side here. Let's just copy and paste this so we have the exact same value. So that way we can compare to see how things work. So the next part we want to do is take care of this value threshold over here, which we're using to remove points if they were below a certain brightness. So let's do that. We're going to jump back down into our VOP and let's go back over to our geometry globals. Now, the thing that we're trying to manipulate is the CD attribute or color attribute. So we're actually going to try and pull CD out of here and then we can do the conversion RGB to HSV. So let's drop down an RGB to HSV node and wire in CD. Now, HSV itself is a vector. We're really only concerned with the value or brightness. So we're going to do another vector to float to break it out into its separate components. And here we are. So, the, so what we're concerned with here is um, determining if the third, the third component here, the value, is less than some threshold that we set. So let's let's quick make a parameter for this threshold. We'll drop down a parameter. And what we'll call it is value threshold. And a float is good because we're comparing float values. Excellent. Now, in order to determine whether the value is less than our value threshold, we need to compare. So we'll grab one of those. And we'll wire them both in. First off, we'll wire this guy. Next time, we'll wire that guy. Looks great. Now, the test we don't want to perform is whether they're equal or not. What we want to test is whether or not the first input is less than the second input. And that'll output a true or false for us, which we can then say, OK, if this is true, we want to remove the point. If not, we'll just take the point as it is. 
So now that we're comparing this, what we need to do is we need to drop down node to um, do, perform this if and then remove the point. So what we need is a if block. Just type tab, start typing if, grab this if block and drop it down. Now this block format, this big blue blob, um, what we want to do is we want to provide our instruction within it. Um, so here we wire our output of our compare into the condition that it's going to test. And if this test comes back true, then perform whatever is inside of this blue block. Um, what do we want to do in there? We want to remove a point from the, we want to remove a point from the geometry that we're working on and we want to remove point, the, the point number that we're iterating over at this point. So we're going to add a remove point node. So since we're iterating over points, we're going to want to operate on ptnum. So that's going to, we're going to wire ptnum all the way down here into this var1 in. Once you plug it into next in, it kind of pops in variable one in. So variable one in and then variable one out is going to go into ptnum. And you can see when I pop up here, this value threshold is now doing what the previous value threshold would do. So if I switch the display flag over here, that might be a little bit hard to see. Let's zoom in a little bit over here. We've got our two nodes here. This is our attribute bop with our multiplier and our value threshold. Setting this, okay, that works. Set this to a value of 0.05, oops, 0.05. Then go over here and set this to a value of 0.05. When we switch the display flag between these two, they look identical. Let's check the velocities, since that's the other attribute we're working on here, and determine if they are correct. So in our previous example, when it brings in our velocities, it you can see them kind of, they're a little bit wavy here, pointing in the directions that they're going. You can see the velocities are there. We've got a little bit of vertical velocity that we added. Okay, great. Um, then when we grab this uh, new velocity control, I'm going to rename this velocity control VOP. When I select this guy, looks almost the same. Let's look at the geometry spreadsheet to see what's different. For here, I select this node. Then I go over here and select this node. I mean, they actually look the same. I'm just going to check this geometry spreadsheet to see if our velocities change at all between the two. So point 0.0 has a velocity of negative 0 0.12, 0 0.26, 0 0.0917. So when I switch over here, that number should be exactly the same. It looks like all these numbers are staying the same when I go back and forth between the two. Okay, excellent. Um, then what I would say we do is let's bring all this stuff down. I'm going to drop down a switch node. And we'll wire in our attribute wrangle first, our velocity control second. And then I'm going to bring in, instead of wiring these directly out, I'm going to wire these guys back up to the output of the switch. So here, when we go to our out surface, we can go up here and we can select whether we want to use input zero, velocity controls, or input one, velocity control VOP. And it, it yields the same result, which is excellent. Cool. So I hope that that was helpful for those of you who are not really particularly keen on doing a bunch of code. Um, essentially, what we've got here is the same thing written out in VOPs that is occurring up here in VEX. So before we wrap up here, I think I just want to go over what we did in here one more time in English. So, you know, to see if we can get any more clarity. Um, I'm going to click in here and I'm going to hit the keystroke command B to make this larger. And it looks like here I have first off a switch node that isn't supposed to be there because I was experimenting and accidentally left this in. So let's hit the delete key and get that out of there. All right, so 
So what we first did here was we pulled in our velocity vector and we split it up into three floats, x, y, and z. Um, we took the x and y values and we piped them into what would later become the x and z values. In order to manipulate the y velocity, we actually pulled our original x and y velocities out and then we added them together. Then we divided them by four. If I hit the P key, you can see we set a value of four. So X component, Y component added together, divided by four. Then what we did was we took the absolute value of that. So if any of our velocities in the X or Y direction added up to be a negative number, we simply took the absolute value of that so that it became a positive number. And then we negated it so that it was for sure a negative number. Then we fed that back into our y velocity. So our x velocity was x velocity. Our y velocity was all this work we did down here. And then our z velocity, we simply just took our y velocity and piped it in. Then we multiplied it by a parameter which we promoted by middle mouse clicking and clicking promote parameter, which up at the top of our VOP we set to 0.439. And then we fed it back out to velocity. The other thing we did inside of this node was we deleted points that were below a certain threshold in terms of their brightness. In order to do that, we did an RGB to HSV conversion. That takes the CD attribute or color attribute and converts it to hue, saturation, and value. Um, the color attribute is a vector going in, so we split it apart into a vector to float. Normally when we would split a color vector apart, we'd get red, green, and blue values, but since we converted from red, green, and blue to hue, saturation, and value, when we split it apart here, we get our hue, saturation, and value amounts. We're only concerned with the value amount, so we pipe our value amount into a compare. What are we going to compare against? The compare is comparing the value of the <laughs> the value of the value against a parameter which we set. If I hop back up and hit P, you can see that we set our value threshold to 0 0.05. What this says is if our incoming value is less than 4, send a true value to this if statement. For all these points, if one of these points has a value that is less than whatever our parameter is, remove the point. Which point are we going to remove? We're going to remove ptnum, which is the current point that we're iterating over. Um, me personally, my gut instinct, I find this to be a lot easier, but I know that that isn't the case for everybody. I know that this, the, the, the VOPS approach is, you know, visual programming language. It's much easier for a lot of people to understand. Um, and sometimes I really do think that it is, it is the best way to go, especially when you're doing stuff with noises and stuff like that. Writing all that stuff out in VEX is really a pain, but at any rate, it's Houdini, so you can choose whatever you want to do. Um, it's pretty powerful either way you go about it. It's fantastic. And that's it. So I hope that you guys had a blast here. Um, I know I did, and I hope that you have an excellent day or night.